How's everybody doing? Hey, you guys can go ahead and please be seated. For those of you that don't know my story, my wife and I are originally from Fort Worth, Texas. So throughout this, you're going to pick up on a little bit of that southern twang, okay? And um, my wife and I, were, we were part of an amazing church in, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And in 2017, God put a vision and a calling on my life to plant a church in Detroit. Now, here's the thing. I had never been to Detroit, and my wife and I, we knew zero people in Detroit. So we continued to pray about it, and in 2019, we took our first visit to Detroit. We were thinking to ourselves, what is church like in Detroit? Like, we've seen it in the South, but what's it like in Detroit? So we Google churches near us when we're in Detroit, and we find this church to attend on a Sunday night. And all of a sudden, this guy gets up to begin to sing, and I'm like, who is this? This voice is angelic. It was Pastor John Pomeroy. He was guest leading worship on a Sunday night. I had never heard of Pastor John Pomeroy before, and I'm like, who is this man? And then all of a sudden, the, the pastor of this church after this amazing worship, says, hey, we have a guest communicator tonight. And then all of a sudden, Pastor John Pomeroy walks up. And I'm like, who is this man that is singing like John Legend and preaching like Stephen Furtick? Who is this? No way that that much talent can be in one man. And after the service ends, uh, I have the opportunity to meet him, and of course, if you know Pastor John Pomeroy, he's not going to give you a fist bump. He embraces me with a hug like we've known each other our whole lives, and we start a conversation, and I shared this vision with him. I said, I believe that God has called us to plant a church in Detroit, and he says, anything that you need, I'm here for you. I'm like, okay, now we know one person. And then his wife walks over, CC, and, and my wife and I were having a conversation with Pastor John and CC, and then it hits us. She's even cooler and more, more talented than he is. <laughs> like, these people are amazing. So our uh, second interest night we ever did in Detroit, keep in mind, we're moving here. We know no, no one. We've been here for like a month. This is back in uh, the end of 2019, and, and Pastor John Pomeroy said, hey, I know you have an event coming up. Uh, would it be okay if we, we came to help out anything that you need? And, and I said, okay, if you guys could just bring us a microphone. Our first interest night, I kind of had to shout at everybody, you know, and, and I said, if you could bring us a microphone. He said, oh, done, we'll be there. About an hour and a half before our event, like 40 people walked through the doors they got lights. I mean, they've got a camera, microphone. They got chairs. I mean, you know Pastor John Pomeroy. There's like pyrotechnics, like flames shooting out. There's like confetti going everywhere. I'm like, who are these people? And, and, and you guys, just so you know, have been such a blessing to our church. And I think so often, whenever we are in close proximity to something, it can so often become so common. I want to just remind you this morning before I jump into my message, what God is doing at New Anthem Church and what God is doing through your pastors is not common and it is not normal. So can you just make some noise one time for the leadership here at New Anthem Church? Since we launched, we were about nine months old as a church. We launched September 20th of 2020, like Pastor John said, in a CrossFit gym. We have seen 77 people give their lives to Jesus. Every week, people showing up for the first time. We have people showing up in their 40s, 50s, 60s, saying this is my first time ever to step foot in a church. The only reason I'm coming is because it was in my neighborhood, and I wanted something to do. We're seeing people uh, who, who are overcoming and, and, and beating lifelong addictions and, and, and people being set free and marriages being restored. And, and I say all that to say you played a part in that. When you sow financially into New Anthem Church, you're actually even blessing churches all across this region. So I just want to take a moment 
to say thank you. You know, I was given 25 minutes on a clock in the back of the room, and I could spend 25 minutes telling you how awesome and how great Pastor John is, but they sent me here to tell you about how awesome and great Jesus is. So let me pray for us as we jump into the message today. God, thank you so much that you would give us this opportunity to show up today, God, to get to hear your word, your truth. God, I pray right now, as we have so many things on the forefront of our minds, thinking about what we've got to do this week, all of the different stresses that we have in our lives, God, right now, would you just take all of that away for a moment to help us focus on why you have us here today? God, we love you. We praise you. And everybody in New Anthem Church said, amen, amen. amen. Have you ever got an upgrade on your tickets at maybe a concert or an event? Anybody ever got an upgrade? Okay, cool. There's like three of us that have the favor of God upon our life. I experienced this for the first time when I was just a child. Uh, like I said, I'm from Dallas, Fort Worth, and so uh, I grew up a Cowboys fan. I'm now been converted to Detroit Lions fan, right? Amen. This is our year. This is our year. I I I'm feeling it. This is, this is our year. But growing up, my dad would take us to this inner squad scrimmage, meaning it was uh, the Dallas Cowboys versus the Dallas Cowboys. And it was kind of something that they would do to get prepared for this upcoming season. And they would try to sell tickets and all of this stuff at this big inner squad scrimmage. And, and we were up at the very top. There was no seats behind us. When I tell you we were in the nosebleeds, we were at the very top of this stadium looking down like, wow, that's Emmett Smith. That's Troy Aikman. That's Michael Irvin. The inner squad scrimmage ends and all of a sudden, now this is how you know it was the 90s because they would never do this today. The announcer says, all right, hey, if you're 12 and under, we're going to allow you on the field to get autographs. So I take all 30 of the escalators to get down the stadium. We get out, out onto the field, and my dad's up in the stands shouting at us like, hey, that's Troy Aikman, get his autograph. Hey, that's Emmett Smith. And all of a sudden, my dad yells at my twin brother and I, and he goes, Josh, Aaron, come here. He's like, you see, you see that old man walking out of the tunnel right there? Go get his autograph. I'm just a little boy. I'm like, Dad, leave us alone. Those are my favorite players over there. He's like, no, trust me. Go over there and get his autograph. So my brother and I reluctantly walk over, you know, to this older gentleman. And I said, can you sign this, you know? Yeah, I'll sign that for you. And, and he signs it. And then I'm walking away reading it. It says, Jerry Jones, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys. One moment, I'm up in the nosebleeds. The very next moment, I am standing face to face with the owner of all of it. Today, we're going to look at a story in the Bible of a man who finds himself in that exact situation. He's way up there. He's in the nosebleeds. And in the very next moment, he is standing face to face with the owner of all of it. The story is found in the book of Luke chapter 19. If you brought your Bibles, you can turn there with me. If you didn't, that's okay. It's going to come up on the screen behind me. We're going to begin reading in Luke 19 chapter or verses 1 and 2. It says, Jesus entered Jericho and made his way throughout the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. Everybody say Zacchaeus with me. Oh, we could do better than that. Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Okay, so we got our two main characters now, Jesus and Zacchaeus. Before I go on, have you ever thought to yourself, how did I end up here today? I think that all the time. I have that thought pop into my mind, and maybe today you're thinking to yourself, how did I end up here today? I mean, after all, I'm sitting in a school right now, those of you in the room. I mean, you didn't sign up for summer school. What am I doing here today? Could it be that you are here for a reason today? Think about all the things that had to happen for you to end up in that chair where you are at today. I believe that Jesus wants to have an encounter with you 
today. You know, that's really what an encounter is by definition. It's an unexpected experience. Could it be that today Jesus wants to have an encounter with you, an unexpected experience, something that you, you didn't really show up knowing that you were going to have? You're not here by accident today. It goes on to say in verse 2, he, who is he, talking about Zacchaeus, was the chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. Now, if you don't really know this story, I've got to give you some context. This profession in this day and age, this is not like the IRS, okay? These tax collectors were the most hated people in all of the community. They were despised. Nobody liked the tax collectors. Why? Because they cheated the people. They would rob the people. They would take more than the portion they were supposed to take, and they would take the money for themselves. Now, he's not just a tax collector. The Bible says that he's the chief tax collector. So there was nobody that was more hated in the community than Zacchaeus. Verse 3 says, he, speaking about Zacchaeus, tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. Some of you that grew up in church like me, you, you remember the story. We used to call him a, a wee little man. I don't know if that's politically correct anymore, so we, we'll, we'll put some respect on his name. But Zacchaeus, he had a physical limitation. He was short. He was shorter than the rest of the people. And, and this caused him to not be able to see Jesus. He was too short. I wonder if today there are some people in the room or maybe some people watching online, and if you're being honest with yourself, maybe you're thinking to yourself, you have a spiritual limitation that is keeping you from being able to see Jesus. Maybe you don't have a physical limitation. It's not that you're too short, but maybe you have a spiritual limitation that you think is causing you from being able to see Jesus. Man, I'm just... I'm, I'm too dirty. I'm too sinful. Man, this would have been great if I could have heard this 30 years ago before I got the divorce, before I went through this or went through that, before I was battling this addiction. But man, if you just knew my story, man, I've just got this limitation that's keeping me from seeing Jesus. Side note, for the believers in the room today. You know, I find it so interesting as we read this story, there was a crowd that was surrounding Jesus that was keeping Zacchaeus from seeing Jesus. If you're a believer, we have to ask ourselves, can people see Jesus in me or am I simply blocking their view? In our sphere of influence that we are around, can people see Jesus in my life or am I blocking their view of Jesus? It's a question that we've got to ask ourselves regularly. Verse 4 says, So Zacchaeus, he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. What's happening here? Zacchaeus hears about this, this Savior, this Messiah that's going to be coming through the town. I mean, this would have been big news. So Zacchaeus, he's like, man, I know I'm not worthy, but I, I want to get a glimpse of this man. So he runs up ahead. I love his intentionality because so many people just kind of stroll through life, don't they? Well, man, if I get a chance to go to church, I guess I'll try to make it this Easter or maybe Christmas. I like to go, you know, Creaster, Christmas and Easter. Well, I just feel like no... I'm not getting a word from God. Run after it. I wonder what would happen if we would just begin to seek Jesus with everything that we've got. If we would sprint after it. He begins to, to climb a sycamore fig tree because once again, he's short. He's trying to get a good view. Now he's up in the nosebleeds. He goes out on a limb to see Jesus. Literally, like he goes out on a limb. That's a dad joke. I apologize. I've been a dad now for four years. I can't help it. They just come out. Thank you. I appreciate it. Verse 5 says, when Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. 
Let me pause right there for just a moment because you've got to understand Zacchaeus was the most hated man in the community. So the only names that he ever heard were things that weren't his real name. People were calling him out of his name. Hey, you're this, you're that. So for someone to say Zacchaeus, his ears would have perked up. Nobody calls me by my name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home tomorrow. No, it doesn't say that. I must be a guest in your home today for just a moment. Because if you're anything like me, you've heard this story a million times. But for just a moment, let's just put ourselves in Zacchaeus' jandals, his Jesus sandals. Let's just get in that moment for just a second. Here's Zacchaeus thinking, man, what would it be like for me to just get a glimpse of Jesus? Then all of a sudden, out of all of these thousands of people around, Jesus stops looks up to the nosebleeds and calls me by name. Zacchaeus, come down. I want to be a guest in your house today. Now, in this moment, Zacchaeus is forced to make a decision to stay up in the tree or to come down and to meet Jesus. You see, up until this point, Zacchaeus, he had heard of Jesus He was now close enough to see Jesus, but with no action on his part, nothing in his life would change. He would just have a story about how one day Jesus had called him by name. Zacchaeus would be telling his grandkids, yeah, I remember, you know, Jesus, one time he called me by name, wanted to be a guest in my house, but I told him, nah, not today. Many of us, we're in a similar point in our lives. You've heard of Jesus. You've even gotten close enough to see Jesus change somebody else's life. But with no action on your part, all you'll ever have is a story about how Jesus called you by your name. Because Jesus is calling you by your name today, but there's got to be an action step there. Luke 19.6 says, Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. I can just imagine Zacchaeus, like somebody wants to come to my house. Zacchaeus never had guests. Nobody liked Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus has what I like to call Poverty of wealth. He had everything, but no one to share it with. He had the mansion, but no one to visit. He could afford any trip, but had no one that wanted to go with him. He had the poverty of wealth. So all of a sudden in this moment, Jesus says, I want to be a guest in your house today. This had to have rocked his world. I love that it says Zacchaeus acted quickly. Notice it doesn't say that Jesus says, hey Zacchaeus, come down from that tree, go home, get your house really, really clean, pick up all those dirty clothes on your bedroom floor, get out the Swiffer wet jet, and you better make sure that it is extra clean because I'm coming over to your house tomorrow. It's not what Jesus says. He says, I'm coming over to your house today. Zacchaeus, I already know the mess that is in your life. I don't need you to get it cleaned up. Allow me to show up right where you're at today. So often I think that we think to ourselves, well, Jesus, let me just pick up the the, the dirty clothes, the dirty laundry on the floor of my soul. Let me begin to clean up my act Let me get it all together, and then I'll invite you in. But Jesus is saying, I already know the mess that is in your life. Quit trying to clean it up by yourself and invite me in so I can help you clean up your mess. Jesus already knows what's going on in your life, and the thing that I love is that he loves you anyways. But what do we do? We believe the lies from the enemy that say you're too far gone. There's no way that God could use you now. 
But the thing that I've discovered in, in my own life and in so many others is that God is bigger than your biggest mistake. Stop believing the lie that the enemy keeps whispering in your ear that, well, if you wouldn't have done that, then you could have been used by God. Are you kidding me? That's not the gospel. The gospel is grace sufficient for all of us. I love what it says in verse 7. It says, oh, this is so good. It says, but the people, the thousands of people, who were around watching Jesus call him by name, it says, but the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner. They grumbled. Oh, you thought cancel culture was new? <laughs> oh, oh, baby, it's been going on for a long, long time. Why? Because our, our human nature is to write people off, to say, oh, I'm better than that person. Why? Because it makes us feel better about ourselves. You can imagine all of the religious people, all of the thousands of people that were out there following Jesus, thinking to themselves, what? He's the last person that you should be eating with, Jesus. I've been serving you faithfully, Jesus. Come on, I tithe, Jesus. Jesus, come on. I love the picture that Jesus gives us. Out of all of the people there, he chooses the least of these. He chooses the least of these. The people that everybody else in the town had already written off. He said, that's who I want to use right now because I'm trying to show the rest of you how big and how great my grace is. I can cover it all. Get rid of this religious mindset of, oh, man, he can only use the one that grew up in Sunday school. Oh, he could use your story. I promise you that he can. That is if you make the decision to fully follow Jesus. Notice I said fully follow Jesus because, man, let's just be honest for a moment. Our world today is full of of Christian atheists, people who will say, I'm a Christian, but live their lives like God doesn't exist. I know we don't have any of those at New Anthem Church. This is a church that is full of people who are full court followers of Jesus, pursuing the things of God. What happens, though? If you're like Zacchaeus and you go, I'm doing it. I'm coming down from this, this place up in the nosebleeds and I'm going to stand face to face with the creator of it all. What happens if you decide to fully follow Jesus? I'll tell you. You're going to have the crowd begin to grumble just like Zacchaeus. You hear about Jonathan? <laughs> you hear about Sarah? <laughs> she says she's a Christian now. It's just a phase. Girl, give it a week. You'll be back at the parties. You'll be doing all of this and all of that again. It's just a phase. Maybe for those of you here in the room or watching online who have experienced that or are experiencing that right now, maybe you're new in your faith, please let me encourage you with this. You can either allow the voice of the crowd to crush your spirits or to confirm your calling. You can either allow the people that are surrounding you saying it's just a phase, it can crush you and you'll go back to your old ways, or you can say, you know what, maybe God does have a great calling on my life because I am hearing the crowd begin to grumble all around me. Maybe right now you're thinking to yourself, yeah, this is great and all, but Josh, like really, you don't know my past. You don't know what I did last night. You don't know what I did before coming here today. Honestly, Josh, you don't even know the thoughts that are running through my mind right now, even as you're communicating, and I don't. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, hey, you don't know people's perception of me that is true but what I know about God is that your past has not diminished God's ability or willingness to use you for great things. In fact, I would argue the opposite. I would say that your past will be a great testimony of God's love and grace and mercy for humanity. 
Your past may be your current reputation, but your future will become your legacy. Somebody needs to hear that one more time. Your past is your current reputation, but what you do with your future will end up being your legacy. What are you doing from this moment forward? So often people say, hey, what are you doing this Friday night? I'm here to ask you, what are you doing for the rest of your life? What are you doing? Give your life to him, fully follow him, and watch and see how he will change the trajectory of your life. Verses 9 and 10 says, Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save those who are lost. That day, Zacchaeus commits to Jesus, gives his life to Jesus. He's radically changed. He says, Jesus, I'm gonna give back four times what I've stolen from people. His life is changed. And that's why Jesus came, was to save those who are lost. John 14, 6 says, once again, this is Jesus speaking. Who cares what I have to say today? Jesus is speaking right here. We better get on the edge of our seats. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. As I was reading this story this week, Something that I had never thought of came to my mind. One of the reasons that Zacchaeus has this encounter, this unexpected experience with Jesus, was simply because of the close proximity that he gets to with Jesus. He runs after it, Jesus, climbs up in the tree, and Jesus can spot him. Hey, he's right there. As a believer, if you're saying, hey, I'm a Christian here today, How many of you know we cannot force anyone, as much as we want to, we cannot force anyone to make a decision to follow Jesus? But you know what we can do? We can continue to put people in close proximity to Jesus. We can continue to invite our neighbor to New Anthem Church. God has put a sphere of influence in your life where you work. You may be the the only Bible that someone at your job reads. You may be the only Jesus that somebody sees. And once again, are are people seeing Jesus in you or are you blocking their view? You have the opportunity to reach this city, to reach this region, one life at a time. Recently, I heard a pastor say that the saddest thing is that most Christians in America will get to the end of their lives and not have played a part in leading one person to Jesus. Let me say that again. One of the saddest things about so many Christians in America is that so many people will get to the end of their life and not have even tried to point one person person to Jesus. The thing that I love about New Anthem Church is that you're going where the people are. A month ago, my wife and I, we drove to to downtown, I believe it's Mount Clemens, and, and, and all of a sudden we get out of the car with our two little girls, and I just see a ton of people with their hands lifted, worshiping Jesus, pointing people to the Savior. Maybe today you can identify with Zacchaeus because you feel the Holy Spirit calling you by name. And everybody in the room is like, everybody, yeah, I just, I'm really still right now, but you're wiggling in your soul. If, If people could see what was going on in here, you're moving around just... Oh, okay. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you about something today. Would you be willing to lean into that? I believe that today in a room this size, maybe there's one person, maybe there's a dozen people that need to give their lives to Jesus for the first time today. Please hear what I'm saying. I'm not asking you if you grew up in church or went to Sunday school. 
I'm not asking you if you wear a cross around your neck. I'm asking you, do you know Jesus as your personal savior? If you don't, that's why you're here today. Right now, I'm gonna ask everybody to just bow your heads and close your eyes. Maybe right now you're watching online, you got your kids running around. Hey, just find a quiet place. This is the most important decision you will ever make in your life. The Holy Spirit is calling you by name. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Don't wait a moment longer. If that's you, you can repeat this prayer after me. You don't have to say it out loud. God knows your heart better than you do. Just say, God, I admit to you that I'm a sinner. God, I still have questions. I still have so many doubts. But to the best of my ability, this little faith that I do have, I commit it to you. To the best of my ability, I believe that you sent your son Jesus to this earth to live a perfect life, a holy life, to die on the cross, to take the punishment, make it personal now, for my sins. God, right now, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to come into my life to make me new. If you just made that decision, it's the greatest decision that you could ever make. Right now, maybe there's people in the room and you're saying, I made that decision a long time ago, but I've gotten off path, I've gotten off course. Maybe the reason that God has you here today is to remind you of your calling, remind you of the fire that you once had for him. Maybe today you need to recommit your life and say, God, I'm coming back to you. God, I want to be used by you. God, help me to be effective at sharing my faith. God, help me to be effective at helping people see Jesus in and through my life. God, I just thank you for all that you're doing in the hearts and lives of every single person here in this room and those watching online. God, continue to show favor to this church. God, continue to bless this church as they continue to make an impact, not only here in their city, but across this region, across this state, across this country, and around the world. God, we love you. We praise you. We ask all of this in your son's name. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for checking out New Anthem Church's YouTube channel. It is our heart and our prayer that this message would be encouraging and impactful for you. If you enjoyed this video, we have tons just like it already on our channel. And we would encourage you to hit the subscribe button either down below or right over here. That way you can stay up to date on when we post the messages. Now, if you don't want to wait for them to come out, we do live stream at 11 a.m. every single Sunday on Facebook at My New Anthem Church. Now here at New Anthem, our vision is so simple. We want to experience Jesus, we want to equip his people, and we want to empower the world. So with that, we want to say we love you and God bless.